This is IB section 9.3, uh, topic of growth in plants, and this is for 2016 exam material. And in this video, we're going to uh, look at and discuss the topic of, of plant growth. Um, and we'll spend some time at the beginning looking at a few things that are actually not part of the standards, but are helpful overall to understanding um, the diversity of plants and some of the different structures that we see in them. And so when we're looking at plants for this unit, we're most, mostly talking about angiosperms. And angiosperms are the flowering plants, and they can be divided into two different categories, the monocots or the dicots. Monocots have one seed leaf, one cotyledon, in the seed, and dicots, die, meaning two, have two seed leaves. Now you don't have to just look at the seeds in order to be, to be able to make some comparisons. Monocots have obviously only one cotyledon, um, but they also have veins in their leaves that are, that are parallel, uh, parallel in arrangements. Um, they have floral parts that are usually in multiples of threes, and some examples would include corn, wheat, lilies, orchids, and palms. Dicots, on the other hand, obviously have two cotyledons. Their veins are usually more net-like. They have vascular bundle that's arranged in a ring, and they have floral parts that are multiples of four or fives. Some good examples would include roses, uh, clover, tomatoes, oaks, daisies, um, and a number of other different species. Uh, plants mostly experience something called intermediate growth, and the lifespan of a plant is um, uh, genetically determined, meaning it's based off of the, the genes, obviously. Annuals complete their life cycle in a single year. Some examples would be like marigolds, uh, cucumbers, uh, lots of garden plants. These would be things that you would plant on an annual basis. Biannuals complete their life cycle in two years. And so in the first year, they're germinating and growing the roots. And in the second year, they're growing stems and leaves, and they produce flowers and seeds. Some examples would include uh, primrose and celery. Perennials would, are, are plants that would live for more than two years and, and this is often like some of the bigger trees would include like maple trees, palm trees, and various grasses. The overall structure of the plant is it's made up primarily of a root and shoot system. So here's uh, the root system and then here's the shoot system. And obviously there's leaves and different nodes and sometimes flowers and branches that are included in, in the shoot system. The tissue in the stem and the leaf uh, has some unique features, and some of these we've, we've already looked at. We've looked at the vascular bundle, which includes the xylem. Um, the cambium is a, a small section that separates the xylem from the phloem. Um, the epidermis would be the outer cells. The pith would be inside uh, portion, and then the cortex. Here's a different uh, cross section of a leaf, in dicot specifically. And we have an upper epidermis, the palisade mesophyll, where a lot of those uh, cells more specific for photosynthesis would be found, the xylem, phloem, cambium, part of the vascular bundle. And then the lower portion of the leaf is going to have the spongy mesophyll, and it's going to have a lot of space that it allows for gases, CO2, and oxygen to be able to move and diffuse through. And then we have a lower epidermis with stomata. Above and below on the upper and lower uh, epidermis, you could also find a waxy cuticle, and that helps to retain water, to actually keep water in. If we look at the structure in a little bit more detail, the stomata and the guard cells, uh, gas needs to be able to get in and out of the plant leaves. And so the diffusion of these gases occurs through stomata, and there are small openings inside of or, or on the bottom portion of the leaf. And they're controlled by something called guard cells, which will close uh, to, to help retain water, um, which would obviously then block the, the diffusion of gases, um, and it can stop or reduce the rate of transpiration. The epidermis layer of the leaf tissue is um, for support and water conservation. The outer layer protects the inner mesophyll layers. Uh, it's got a thick wall for strength and support. It's transparent to allow for light to be absorbed. Obviously, that's very important in plants. And it secretes a lipid layer, which creates that waxy cuticle that helps to prevent uh, water loss. The vascular bundle, as we've talked about, transport water and photosynthetic pro uh, products, sugar throughout the plant. The xylem transports the water. Um, the phloem is, is what's primarily transporting those sugars. So now we want to get into some of the more specific topic for this uh, section 9.3. We want to look at undifferentiated cells and mitosis. And totipotent cells, um, many plant cells 
including fully differentiated plants, uh, plant cells, have the capacity to generate whole parts. And where the plant is growing typically is in a root meristem or an apical meristem. And we'll look at those individually here in just a second. Uh, here's the apical meristem, and it kind of looks like some weird alien thing. But this is where the plant is growing uh, vertically. Um, so these would be some auxiliary buds that would then produce additional shoots, but the plant is growing vertically from this apical meristem. And the growth is going to be confined to these regions called the meristems. Um, and those are, com those are regions that are composed of undifferentiated cells that are undergoing active cell division. Uh, and so these cells are dividing by cell division, and that's causing the plant to grow in these different regions. So let's take a look at growth in apical meristems. These are found at the tips of the stems and the roots, and they're primarily responsible for uh, growth. And they increase in, in length of these different systems, uh, again, causing primary growth. It occurs by cell divisions, um, and this is occurring by mitosis. And so these are generally small cells that go through the cell cycle of mitosis to make more cells multiple times um, repeatedly in order to create more and more new cells. And so how this works in the shoot apical meristem is it's producing stem and, and cells that develop into leaves and flowers. And how this works is that with each cell division, one cell remains in the meristem while the others increase in size and eventually then differentiate due to some different gene expressions to form the meristem region and that will eventually go on to perform or to become the different leaf structure or the stem structure or whatever it may be based off of what the genes are telling it to do. Um, and so one cell is remaining uh, that continues to divide and that remains in the meristem while the others um, are differentiated to become whatever structure the plant plant needs. Um, and so the apical meristem overall gives, gives rise or produces um, the epidermis, ground tissue, the vascular tissue, including the xylem and the phloem, uh, as well as the pith. Um, and this all produces initial tissue in the growing plants. The lateral meristems are what increases the lateral or secondary growth. And so this is how the plant gets um, wider, or the circumference uh, and strength as well as the stem increases. And this occurs at the cambium, which is between the xylem and the phloem, and it forms a secondary xylem or, or phloem. And it occurs, this occurs more actively in older stems and, and root tissue. So now that we've seen and, and examined how um, plants can grow vertically and uh, increase in circumference and their width, um, let's talk about some different plant hormones uh, that can influence shoot growth. And auxins is a type of hormone um, that is responsible for this. And a hormone is some sort of chemical message that's produced and released in one part of an organism that affects another part of an organism. And there's lots of different hormones, uh, including those in the human body. Um, there's one in particular in plants called oxin indole 3 acidic acid, so it's a type of auxin, and it controls the growth of the shoot apex, and it promotes the elongation of cells in the stems, can also ca uh, can inhibit growth uh, in high amounts. And so it can also, uh, different auxins can initiate roots and, and fruits and leaf development and growth um, and this one in particular controls the growth in the shoot apex. Nodes are regions of the meristem that are left behind as the shoot apical meristem grows. So as that, as that plant grows vertically, nodes are regions of, of meristem that are left behind. And its growth can be inhibited, inhibited by auxin. So that auxin hormone can actually inhibit growth of the node. And what we see happen, actually, um, the further the distance the node is from the shoot apical meristem, the lower the concentration of auxin. And then, as a result, less likely um, a, an additional growth or an auxiliary bud of the plant is to be inhibited or blocked by the auxin. So as the plant continues to grow, that node gets further and further away from where the meristem, because the plant's growing vertically, say the meristems up here, as it continues to grow further away from that node, the amount of oxygen continues to decrease and to decrease. And so oxen can inhibit the growth of the node, but as the meristem grows away from the node, there's less and less oxen, which then allows eventually that node to be able to grow. Um, cytokines are hormones that are produced in the root, and they also promote auxiliary, auxiliary bud growth.
plant tropisms um, are growth responses to directional external stimuli. And there's two different types that we're going to look at. The first is phototropism, and the second is gravitropism. And the photo is uh, dependent on light. And you've probably seen this before, and you can kind of see it in the image here. This is what happens when the plant grows towards light. Um, you've maybe put a plant on a window seal, a uh, window ledge, and you've seen that plant kind of bend towards the lights. That's what's happening in this case. And then gravitropism is the growth response in, in response to a gravitational force. And we're going to look at um, these in a little bit more detail. Um, oxen can form concentration gradients, meaning that there's different amounts uh, within, it, within a gradient. And what this can result in is uh, some changes to the plant. Um, the ox oxen hormone influenced the cell growth rates by changing pattern of gene expression. The oxen hormone gets transported by the PIN3 proteins. And these proteins are delivered to where growth is needed. Uh, and in cases, obviously, plants need sunlight. And so movement, there's going to be movement of the plant structure towards light. Um, and as this occurs, it would inhibit the root system from growing further. And so if trophisms uh, in the tip of the plant, or the, the tip of the stem, detect a greater intensity of light on one side of the stem than the other, oxen is transported laterally from the side with the brighter light to the more shaded side. And here's an image that helps to show this. So this side of the plant is detecting a greater intensity than over here. And so what happens is that oxen gets transported by the PIN3 pro proteins from this side of the plant laterally to the other side. And so that causes the cells on the shaded side to increase in number, causes more cells to grow, and so then the, the stem is able to bend towards the light, and then that re results in the leaves uh, on the stem to be able to receive more light and photosize, photosynthesize at a greater rate. And that's all because of the transport of the oxen from one side to another. Some similar things can happen in the root system, and if the plant uh, has its root on its side, gravity causes organelles to accumulate on the lower side of the cell. Um, and so this allows the PIN3 proteins to direct auxin uh, to be transported to the bottom portion, the bottom portion of the cell. Um, and this high concentration of auxin inhibits the root cell elongation. So the top cells elongate at a higher rate than the bottom cells, causing the root to bend downward. Um, and so this is kind of opposite of what we saw in the shoot system with the, the stem bending. The pattern of auxin effect is opposite in the shoot versus the root. In the shoot, auxin promotes elongation, and the root, it actually inhibits it. So it's the opposite of each other. But it's kind of the same idea um, with that oxygen, auxin. Uh, causing a, a shift or blocking a, a shift in bending of the, of the structure. The last topic that we want to look at in this video is called micropropagation of plants. And this is used a lot of times in research purposes. Um, if you're able to identify a plant, uh, a stock plant, a plant that you want to be able to use, this process is basically the extraction of a portion of that plant and the cloning of a portion of that plant in order to be able to produce many, many copies. And this is done in vitro. Um, and it produces a large number of identical plants. You're basically making clones of the plants. And if this process is completed successfully uh, in a sterile environment, it can produce virus-free strains of the plants. And viruses can influence uh, negatively and sometimes positively the plant. Um, this process allows for the uh, plants to be produced virus-free. Virus it's fast and it takes less space than actually growing the plants, um, so it's quite a bit quicker than just growing the plants traditionally. Uh, and so how it works is tissues are sterilized and placed in a sterilized growth medium uh, with plant hormones, auxin, and cytokin to, uh, to increase cell growth. The amounts of the hormones determine if the, the root, the shoot, uh, or both develop. And then once the roots and the shoots start to develop, the plant can actually be put in soil in order to be able to grow. Um, and so this is a way that you can produce multiple copies of genetically identical and similar plants uh, very quickly. So that wraps up our discussion of plant growth for section 9.3.